three, two, one. Going down, everybody. Show number 69, Mojo the Hype Podcast coming at you. Happy holidays, everybody. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. We got a lot of stuff going down here today. We're going to talk about Prism NBA and its prices. Uh, Some of the silvers have been ending along with some of the lower number parallels. So we're going to compare prices and talk about the players to see if they warrant their prices. So we'll have a great discussion on that. We're also going to talk about Immaculate NFL. Uh, Drew Brees, Philip Rivers, and Advent calendars, because it's that time of season. So you can check out mojobreak.com for all your sports card hobby needs. Uh, today and throughout the week, we're going to be breaking all kinds of stuff. We got playoff football coming up next uh, after the show. We got 2017 Mahomes hunting with Vertex NFL. We'll be doing those throughout the week. So even if you don't get in today, we uh, we bought a couple cases of that, and that's a great product to get into at $34.99 a spot. We got Prism NBA today, Random Team, and uh, Prism First Off the Line Mixer. So it's going to be a real fun show. C-Rad, how's it going, dude? What's up? I'm good. Dan, Dan? It's a little early for the happy holidays, you think? Um, it could it's not, be. It's not even December yet. It's it's like happy holiday. We only had one we so had far. One. Well, you know, the media has uh, brainwashed me, and uh, everywhere I go, I just hear Christmas songs. I see Christmas stuff, uh, gifts and stuff like that. So You and, see uh, gifts? I see gifts. I don't buy any. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Bought myself some gifts on uh, Black Friday. Uh, and my kids. I bought my kids a few things as well. But uh, the advent calendar, which is coming up later in the show, is why I was prompted to say happy holidays. So we'll tease you guys into the advent calendar, and we'll see if that's a good idea by Tops or not. So, uh, But we're going to jump right into some Prism NBA. We busted, I think we've done like 20 cases so far. And it's uh, it's the bee's knees. I mean, we're getting some good cards. We're getting silvers of all the main guys. Um, and it's it's been pretty pretty crazy so far. Um, C Rad, you probably did more than me and Dan. What do you what do you think about the product? Best prism ever. Is it? Whoa! <laughs> what? Bold, 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 uh, bold statement. Well, tell no, us, no, no, tell no, us no, why. No, no, no. Tell us I, why. Um, okay, I'm not gonna say it's the best prism ever. I'm gonna. It's say like the third or fourth best. It's 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 <laughs> one of the better years of prism. I will say that in terms of. Um, them spreading around the the rookie parallels and it helps that there is a lot of rookies to chase this year so that always helps um so that that puts it on par i would say with last year maybe a little bit higher than last year because it feels like there's more guys to chase this year it, it does definitely feel that way we're going to highlight one of them right now and it's the number one selling guy luca Doncic. um if you're watching the show you're seeing this blue shimmer from first off the line number to seven um I was going to ask you guys what you think it sold for, but it shows on the screen. Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead and ask me. <laughs> How much does it sell for, Dan? Twenty five, fifty. On plus. the nose! Well, but, but wait, I'm getting like a vibe of $10 shipping. Oh, okay. Wow, you're so, right. Uh, did, did I get it? You got it right. Ding, 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 ding. Nice. Um, nice. All right. But, yeah, twenty five <laughs> fifty. I mean, I am just completely shocked by Luca's pricing. I predicted two fifty prior to the release. For a silver prism. Now we're just talking about yeah, the I was silver on the high prisms. End, and I think you guys were thinking I was crazy. I just, I'm trying to figure out why. Um, and that's what we're going to discuss. Why do you guys think that Luca, and then this is posing to the chat, we're going to get more into it as we keep talking. But why do you think Luca Doncic is selling for so much? What is it about him? I mean, if you look at some of the other prices of his cards on the next few slides, um, 
you got a Mojo Silver, not not graded obviously, that went for two thousand. The Gold Auto went for two thousand. A high end silver, like this is probably the highest auction was went for six hundred. I think they're closer to five now. Um, but I wanted to compare it. So you got a Donovan Mitchell. Once again, you're listening to the podcast. You're probably not obviously not seeing what we're seeing here, but a Donovan Mitchell Mojo Silver, number to twenty five, graded a nine five, mm-hmm. sold for under fourteen hundred dollars. But a Luka Doncic raw sold for two thousand. So why? Why is, is he, that? He is. He he's the next coming to Dirk. Is he? He's on the same team. Dirk's on his way out. Luca is going to take over Dirk's spot. The new the new week hype helps too, like with these sales. These and sales. Uh, and plus, like they're building a a you know a title caliber team over there. They're going to do it. Well, do you guys think the hype from last year has carried on to Luca? This Absolutely. Year. Oh yeah, I think, I think every Prism release is going to get bigger. Is just going to. Can get, you imagine what? Zion there's going to be more hype. Oh my god. Yeah, Zion, it's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be dumb. raw. Like we're talking a thousand dollars probably. <laughs> yeah, for and that's silver. What, that's what we were talking about in the chat earlier this morning. We were breaking case twelve, which was actually fabulous. You guys should check the replay out on that one. Um, yeah, what is Zion or R.J. Barrett going to sell for next year? Is are we legitimately going to look at a nine hundred dollar raw silver unnumbered unautoed card? Is that is that a possibility? Yes, right yes. out of the gate. Yes, absolutely. Man, people are crazy. And you know, it, it's crazy because in basketball, we don't put a lot of stock in which team they go to these prospects as much as we do baseball and football. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't matter where Zion goes next year. Yeah, you know? it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what team. Because it didn't matter what team LeBron went to. It it doesn't it doesn't matter. Where baseball, we're always like, oh man, is it is it the Yankees or the Cubs or the Dodgers or the Red Sox? And then football, you're like, I mean, yeah, football's kind of fo- you know, football. Man. You're, I, it it really depends on the talent, I guess, because um, like the Colts, you never really want like a top guy to go to the Colts. But Andrew Luck proved everybody wrong, right? Um. He he did well, so I don't know. Maybe it's just a baseball. <laughs> it could be. I mean, I don't know. You're, what Nets rookie has done well? What Raptors rookie? Maybe has they sold well? they just haven't had a good draft. If it if Zion goes to the Nets, it's an eight hundred dollar card. And Nets team prices are five hundred dollars for Prism. Because Demar Derozan and Kyle Lowry, you know, have had great years. Obviously, Demar's on the on the Spurs now, but. His cards don't sell for anything. He's on the Raptors. So there is some teams, in my opinion, that a Luka Doncic could go to. No. And they can't and they no. wouldn't sell. No. Well, I, I disagree think, there. Yeah, I think it's nope. completely dependent on the player. Well, yeah. the Hawk the Hawks don't sell. And now they do. Kind Trey of. Young. Kind no, of. Not no. compared to Luka. No, but we put the Hawks up and they're one of the first teams to go. Well, yeah. And when we, that hasn't been the case. For five, six, seven years, ever since we've been breaking basketball, the Hawks have always been one of the last teams to go. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. I can see both sides. I think there is some teams that you know. So what if Luka? What if Luka Doncic is on the Lakers? Then is it the same price or is it higher? I, I think it's higher. I think I think the Lakers are one of those teams where, let's face it, Kuzma and Ball. They got pushes in their market value because of the team they were on. Yeah. I think if Lonzo Ball was on the Nets, his card, I mean, he would have still been a high profile rookie, but his cards have been going for 75 bucks, 100 bucks. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Vince was huge in Toronto. Vince Carter was big. I, I, you know, and it's hard to, because we didn't really have, you know, the hobby we have now to compare the data there, but that is a good, good guy to compare. Um, but what was going to say, so go back to that last, that last slide with the Mojo Silvers and, um, would you rather have a Donovan Mitchell, that one that we show here? So you could buy a Donovan Mitchell Mojo, right? And a Donovan Mitchell Silver, probably both nine fives for the price of the raw Donchick. What would you rather have? Hmm. A raw, just the silver. Yeah, no. Raw. Well, go to the 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 Mojo Silver slides. That one. So you could see the the Don chick sold for two thousand dollars. 
The Donovan Mitchell was best offer accepted, so that might have been twelve hundred. So you might have been able to get that twelve hundred dollar Donovan Mitchell nine five mojo sil- mo- mojo to twenty five, and then another Donovan Mitchell silver graded, and probably still have two hundred dollars in your pocket. I'm going Luca. You're gonna go Luca. I'm going Luca. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I wow. I've been telling you guys, I'm I'm jumping on the Mavericks train, man. I'm jumping on. <laughs> shoot, shoot. Get on. All aboard. <laughs> wow, that one set me back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I will also. I'm, I want to add that because Dennis Smith sells so well, I mean, <laughs> dude. Dude, I want sells real well. Dude, I want to add that I think what helps Doncic too is it probably is a little bit of international. Thing, international. Right? That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That that that, that Donovan helps Mitchell doesn't have bit. doesn't have the 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 international you know market where Luca does. Does he? He does. Let's go look. At I his. know. I know him personally. He, he's huge. He's look, huge in wherever. Where is he from? Lithuania, <laughs> Lithuania, Slovenia, Lithuania. I know he played for the Slovenian team, but uh, he's huge there. I talk to his, talk to the homies all the time. <laughs> Slovenia, yeah. Slovenia, whatever. <laughs> Let's go to that that image of him. Um, is it is his face marketable? I mean, now we're, we're, we're I know we're getting a little weird. You know here, what? I like I like the tattoos, man. He does have he does have an uh, arm tattoo. He actually has my tan going on. Oh, the farmer tan. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you know, based on that. Me and Luca, Farmer Tan Bros. So he kind of looks like, and and this is just straight off the dome opinion. He kind of looks like he could be delivering pizzas, though. Whoa, kind of looks like that. Like the guy that would show be up like at your house and deliver a pizza with a hat, like a hat on, and be like, "Hey, I'm Luca. I'm delivering your pizza hut." Be like you know the what I'm tallest pizza delivery guy ever. <laughs> well, yeah. You show up, yeah. you're all, dude. Are you seven <laughs> four? Yo, can you clean? Hell, can you clean my <laughs> ceiling as well? Um, I don't know. I don't get it. I, I mean, it's great for the hobby, and it's great pulling these cards. I mean, what do you th- are you are you se- if you pull a Luca now? Are you selling? Are you guys selling? Let's start with C Red. Are you selling if you pull a Luca right now? Hell to the na na na. No, no, nope. Jesus, I'm not either. We have what? we have one. What? We have one. People are like four hundred fifty dollars. I'm all no. You guys are crazy. Not I mean- not gonna take it. I'm gonna hold on to it. It's a crown jewel of my PC. I, but but Tatum and Mitchell. Don't sell for as much as him. Like those guys are better. Yeah, those Tatum, guys are better basketball players. Tatum and Mitchell, kind of dime a dozen. You're gonna see. Oh, okay, you're gonna see the just like, the best rookie is, class that we've ever had. Is, you got the international flavor here with Luca, but he's so much more than the other guys. It just seems like there's just one injury away, or oh, one injury away. So, so you're telling me Mitchell and Tatum are immune to getting injured. No, but they have a whole year of playing basketball under their belts. What does it matter? They're all young kids. I just, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, you, like I said, I'm glad had, there's a guy like this driving like the Tatum hobby. and Mitchell are like seasoned vets. They like know how to train in the off season. They've been doing it for 20 years. No, they're what? They're like one year apart. Okay. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a guy who's been in the league for five years I mean, he almost is outselling Simmons. I mean, he's getting close to outselling Simmons. Well, the issue with Simmons needs to learn how to shoot. He doesn't need that. Dude. He does. Fresh Prince. He does. So the Mavericks are nine and nine currently. Luca's stats are pretty good. Um, do you? I mean, is there a shot? Uh, I told you guys that we'd be fighting for the eighth spot. Yeah, but look at that <laughs> nine and nine. Where were they last year? They weren't even. They couldn't even smell five hundred. Well, there was also rumors of them trying to tank for Luca. So yeah, he must be that good. If Cuban's like, we got to tank, got to tank for for this kid. And look, Mark Cuban's a smart dude. I mean, he is on Shark Tank. I mean, he is he is pretty smart. Do you think the Mavericks could slide up and take? Uh, well, I mean, they're kind of tied right now with the Spurs and Kings. You know, I, they could beat the Warriors right now. Have you Dude. seen the Have you seen the Warriors yeah. play? You, if you If you it's pretty bad. If you, Steph's coming back every year on the West, if you look like by the end of the year, it's always like four to eight that could like switch at any moment. Four to twelve that could switch at any moment, depending on if they win or lose. The four yeah, there spot. was uh, at the end of the year last year. Didn't the Blazers? Weren't they like the they they were like switching Bubbling every teams, every yeah. every game they would go from like the second to the sixth like in in a span of like one or two games. Well, the Jazz made into the playoffs. They had to win their very last game. Yeah. Yep. And yep. I mean, what there may have been three or four wins that separated the Jazz from what the Blazers, maybe Probably. the third, the third yeah. spot. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, look, there's only four wins that separate the Clippers from the Mavericks. We've seen the Clippers in first. It's only that, six wins crazy. that <laughs> yeah, separate that, the that Mavericks. That's absolutely crazy seeing the Clippers in And first. the Nuggets at third. There's six wins that separate the Mavericks to the Warriors. Yeah. Well, 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 the Nuggets have been steadily, like, you know, go, climbing every year. But yeah, the Clippers is like, boom, we lost all our stars, but we don't care. We're in first place. Dude, yeah. yeah. Why are the Clippers doing so well? What's, what's going on? Who do they got? Shy Gill just did. They, and, that's and, one. And, that's Harold, dude. That's Her- one dude. Harold's out there beasting it. Who? Montrez Harold, um, the the former Rocket. Tobi- yeah. Tobias Harris is their best player right now. Yeah, Tobias former. Tobias. Magic. So they have Tobias Harris, Montrez Harold, and Shy Gilgis, and they're number the number one seed. Yeah, that's crazy. Ziggy has a good question. Is race part of this of of Luca's value? If Luca was black, would his value be this high? Abs- uh, so if he was a European. African American guy, like Thon Maker. Um, I don't, I don't really see how I don't, I, don't, I, I personally don't see how race plays into it. It's, it's the type of player. It's the skill level, like. right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't, isn't Ben Simmons from Australia? Australia? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I guess it doesn't. I mean, but I don't know. I, is Luca flashy out there though? Is he, is he, is he? You know, Jason Williams style passing. I haven't watched a was, whole lot was, of Mavericks. Games. Was Dirk in his career? Was he no, flashy? No, no. Just, just scoring, con- just consistent, putting up, you know, 25, 30 points a game. Yeah. Getting some boards, you know, making making the team win some games. That's what it's about, right? And Simon, yeah, make, winning games. I mean, 9-9 nine nine is probably a better start than they thought they were going to have, right? Um, Simon has a good point. Uh, Doncic playing three years of pro ball before he was drafted. I think he started playing when he was 16, right? Yeah, he was a pro a young, when he was 16. Young, young I think that too. makes a difference. So, and you know, we always go back to the fact that these college kids are doing one and done. So he was basically had two extra years on him. Granted, it wasn't college level basketball, but it was pro level basketball in Europe. So it's probably pretty comparable. So in Slovenia. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting. I just, I didn't ever thought he was going to sell for so much. I, I predicted 250. If you look at the guys last year with Tatum, uh, Mitchell kind of caught on right in the middle of Prism. They were all around like two, three hundred. Even Lonzo was two, three hundred. You know, and then there wasn't a big separation. So if you go to the next slide, I got Trey Young's early sales on some of his main cards. Mojo Refractor Silver for 460, and his Prisms are around 187. So that's a Big drop from Luca. That's a must buy right there. For the mojo, that's a must buy for that's sure. A, they got it. go go and pick up your Trey Youngs. So Dang. would you rather have five Trey Youngs or one Luca? Ooh, I love me some Trey Young. You do. You love that I, style. I would go with the five Trey Youngs. So I mean, why is this guy not selling? Why is he I mean he's selling well, don't get me wrong. One eighty seven is still pretty good for a silver. But what's wrong with him? Why is yeah, he not their stats are comparable? But the Hawks suck, right? I mean, this ho- the Hawks are not they're, – they're not 9-9, nine nine, right? Um, I didn't do the research on that, but I don't think so. I think you're correct. Um, they're not 9-9. Nine nine. Do they still have Kent Bazemore? Is that, that's a good question. Yep. Kent, Bazemore is, Kent Bazemore is their superstar. Kent right? Bazemore is their, uh, is their stud right now. Uh, they are 5-16. and 16. Okay, so, so yeah, yeah. If, if they were 9-9, nine and, nine, and I think Trey Young has had some really good games. Really good games. And he's had some really bad games. So Some really rookie games. Yeah. He needs to. He, I mean, he needs to get a little bit more consistent. But I think we're gonna look at it in four or five years, and we're gonna see that Trey Young is one of the superstars in the league. Yeah, yeah I think, what, along, I think along, what's happening... along with Luca. I think. I think you're. Yeah, I think this is. Gonna they're gonna be, you know, top ten, top fifteen talents in the league. So is Trey Young gonna bump off some of the guys from last year? So is Trey Young gonna be more valuable than Jason Tatum? It's well. Is Trey Young going to be more valuable? It's tricky. Than... It's Jason Tatum. It's tricky because the Celtics are going to go deep into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Jason Tatum is. I mean, it's the Celtics, so you got to look at the team as well. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, his the Utah Jazz. I don't. I think they're struggling a little bit right now, but they're going to be in the playoffs. Most likely. So I don't think Trey Young is going to knock those guys off quite yet yeah i was gonna say because here's a good question but let's, i think it, but i think in five years you're gonna look at trey young and go he is one of the faces of the nba well who do you think out of last year's rookie stars you know let's say five or ten of them who who could trey young bump off of that list in five years like a dennis smith kuzma kuzma okay yeah i, I, don't I actually there. i don't see kuzma being a laker 
for an extended period of time. I, you know, a lot of people are uh, high on Kuzma. I've seen a few games where he just got just took bad shots, get swatted. But I could see him being used as a midseason, some midseason trade bait to get another LeBron James type of veteran presence. Yeah, for like a playoff run, and he does have value. So I think they can trade him they away. Can trade, they can trade him away. Um, so, so, I, so Kuzma's I think, a good one. How about, how about how about uh, C Rad? What do you think? Who could who could Trey Young or Luca bump off out of last year's rookie class? Mar- Markel Fultz. Well, that's an easy one. <laughs> uh, either or could probably. I, I I would say I'm still pretty high on Jason Tatum. Um, so he's he's gonna stay on there for me. But probably anybody else from last year's draft, they could they have a chance. More so, the thing is like. Luca is like more obviously gonna be a great player in the league. Trey Young's one like is he's like a X factor, right? Kind of like Steph was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, he has the potential. He has maybe a higher potential, but will he reach that? Right. Ceiling? He could wind up being like a Dante Exum yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Wait, um, who who do we compare to Dante Exum? Trey Young. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, I'm saying he could wind up being. There's a guy like Dante Exum. Dante Exum coming into the league. Dante Ex- rookie year was a top five. Yeah, guy. a good defensive. Now he's play- not. a good defensive player, but he couldn't score. Right. And you're comparing him to a guy who is a sharp. No, he was a score. score. He was a no, he, scorer when he came out. No, when he came in, when he came into the league, he was a defensive player yeah. and he could not score. He still can't score. He still can't score. Still, still didn't figure. Trey Trey Young could score. Exum never never figured it out. Could Luca be more valuable than Ben Simmons in five years? Uh, I'm gonna say yes. I hope not. I got more Ben Simmons cards than Luca, so I'm gonna be. I think it. Well, he has it, but I. I, I, um, I think what if What if in three What if in three years the Simmons has a title and an MVP? Right. Then I then I think. And the and the and the Sixers are closer, obviously, than the Mavericks of doing that, right? Yeah. So especially with the way the Jimmy, Jimmy Butler has been playing, Mavericks are about three years away. Yeah, yeah. From building the dynasty. Ooh, Max says Luca is already a better player than Simmons. Ooh, that's that's crazy talk, man. I think you and Dan have been hitting that hippie level. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I didn't agree with that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> no, know. but you, I, I don't know but about you that. made the statement earlier that I that I that I called you out on about. Uh, who, who was it? I obviously already forgot. It was it was so ridiculous that I forgot about Dennis it. Dennis Smith Jr. No, the, you would buy you would you would buy the Lucas over the Donovan Mitchells. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that that was a crazy statement. No, no, not at all. That, that was crazy. It was crazy that you would actually even compare those two. Yeah, it's crazy that you would. Donovan no, Mitchell it's crazy. Is, a, is, is 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 an amazing player. And there, I I like Donovan Mitchell. There's players who've been like Donovan Mitchell who have a similar playing style as Donovan Mitchell every single year. Every year. There's, there's been a, nobody that's yeah. ever dribbled the ball like Luka Doncic. He's, there, he, he has that Euro, Euro step down. I, I right? hate – Donovan Mitchell's a, a dime a dozen player. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, he's a good player. I mean, he he could probably take me one-on-one. Maybe. It'd but be close. It, it would be close, though. I mean, if we were playing 21, I'm a pretty good free throw shooter. I may be able to stay in the game, you know? Yeah, he's only got like 10 inches on you, but hey. Yeah. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's a good player, but again, he's it's like it's like saying you want to go back to Kent Bazemore. Kent Bazemore is putting up tremendous numbers. Is he? Would you compare Kent Bazemore to Donovan Mitchell? Kent Bazemore is not putting up tremendous. He's numbers. putting up pretty good numbers. Well, let me let, let's see. He's averaging thirteen points a game. That's pretty good, man. That's, Thir- the the it's NBA, good for a six man. The NBA is a tough game. It's a tough game. Can you score thirteen points in the NBA? I don't know. His career, he averages eight. So I mean, it. You well, know, he, so he's having he's having a great year. Him and Javal McGee. Are he's having a great superstars. year. But no, he's he's having a good year. Donovan Mitchell, he. What if he's averaging thirteen points next year? What's Mitchell averaging? Donovan Mitchell. What's for your this year? boy? Your boy. He is my boy for the sake of this argument because I I can't buy into a guy that's played eighteen games, and and his prices and, and are double. And, and when you when you bring this up, tell me twenty points. How this many year. shots a game? How many shots a game for how, who? For Mitchell, not not ba- Bazemore is a is a team team first team first guy. Well, bring up Luca's stats, and I'll bring up Donovan Mitchell's stats. Um, shots a game. Well, I mean, it's they played seventeen games. He's averaging twenty points, which he was ad- averaging twenty points last year. Cool. Um, minutes played thirty-two, down from one. I don't. Where do you see shots on Basketball Reference? I don't. There see has it. to be 
shots. Oh, well, field goal attempts, right? Yeah. He's averaging 18.3 field goal attempts per game. 18. This year. 18. Yeah, 18.3 field goal attempts. Luca is averaging... 14.8. Okay, that's not even comparable. comparable. So no, four that's more not, shots. That's four more points. Four well, more how shots. many? How many minutes? At Thirty-three compared to thirty-two. Well, how many assists does Luca have? Four point three a game. Uh, Three point seven. Yeah, because Mitchell doesn't want to pass. It's all about him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still. Hey, I'm riding hey, the more Don, for Donovan's sure. Donovan's having a down year compared to his so far, freshman year. So yeah. far, so far, he's averaging the same amount of points though, and his field goal percentage is from uh, forty-three down to forty-one. Not, not a huge difference. But I'm not knocking Luca. I'm just trying to understand why we're so crazy about his prices. And yes, I know somebody mentioned ride the wave while you can, and, and believe me, we are. And it's gr- it's a great thing. I just uh, my other side of my mind always is wondering what what is it about this? Cat? I mean, look at look at the stat sheet right there. Twenty points, four boards, seven assi- seven or four uh, four assists, seven boards. Yeah, I'm I mean, he's he, filling it up, filling it up, filling it up. What's Early Mitchell on. doing? Mitchell's like twenty points. What? Three, three, assists. three assists and what? Maybe two two boards. Um, yeah, uh, total two point six. Two point six. One point six steals though. One point six steals. What, what we got steals? Do I got you in that category? Yes. So you got one, one steal. One, one steal. He's almost averaging two steals a game. <laughs> How about turnovers? That's a good stat to look at. Two uh, turnovers. It'll it'll be Mitchell. He holds. He he. Has the ball? Two point seven turnovers. Three point eight. The young. The guy's a turnover machine. He, does, he doesn't have a lot of guys on his team to pass to. They're running. They're running the wrong plays. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wanted to look at. Uh, I wanted to talk about Prism as a product. We kind of move on from from our Luca heated debate. So if you hadn't noticed, and if you're a new collector, pay attention to this. Josh Hart has a rookie card logo on his cards for eighteen nineteen Prism. He's not a rookie this year. It was a misprint. So, luckily, he's not selling for a whole lot, but you could imagine if Josh Hart becomes a top five player in the league, which, you know, odds are he probably won't. But, you know, people 10 years from now may think that's the card to get. Very confusing to collectors um, that they put a rookie card logo. Obviously, a Photoshop mistake. Um, So, you can see on the right side, if you're watching the video, that that's his rookie from last year was 17-18. So, they messed up. So good. Got to put him in twice. Yeah. And then Shy Gilgis... Uh, they forgot to put a rookie card logo on his cards. Ah, he looks like a veteran. <laughs> he, he does. He looks like he needs a cheeseburger, <laughs> actually. Um, but they needed a rookie card logo on that. And I don't know if my Milos didn't transfer over. Um, I, for some reason, I thought I put it on there from my phone. But Milos has a rookie card, too. But the funny thing is, is that Milos actually did not have a rookie prism last year. So okay. maybe it's kind of right. I don't know. Maybe that's why it's the same team as Shy. So maybe they forgot to put the rookie card on, and they were like, they they did they switched him over. So yeah, the Milos did. He does not have a prism um, from last year, rookie. But you can see people are listing these on eBay as rookie, and you can't blame them. That means that that person said that that listing has error, <laughs> you know, error. But some people that you know walk into a shop, it's their first time opening a basketball. How do you know? How would you know that Milos is not a rookie, or Josh Hart? If you're not a Laker fan, how would you know he's not a rookie? So I know Panini gets busy and they crank out a lot of products, especially a lot of Prism. Um, but that's something. What if they would have put another rookie card logo on Donovan Mitchell? Could you imagine that? What would that be if they the the Jason Tatum or Donovan Mitchell had rookie card logos on it this year? Wouldn't that be that? Wouldn't that be nuts? So thankfully they didn't. But uh, you know that's uh, that's one of the funny things. And um, if you hadn't noticed, there's a lot of different Prisms out there uh, we've been busting obviously the hobby version uh, there's the choice version which is uh, an Australia and Japan oh, exclusive I was gonna, I was gonna go was gonna ahead like, I was gonna be like tell us more <laughs> tell us more tell us more it's a seven card pack they took it from like Bowman choice and there's like exclusive tiger parallels and one auto a box it's only seven cards so that was only Australia um, and, and there you go nah, there's one and of them. Uh, I think it was Japan Japan, was and, Japan. Australia and Australia and only distributed over there you can see a couple of the boxes on youtube um we've got some coming imported it over the border we got like a 10 boxes coming right now man it's gonna be hard to make that rainbow this year boys i know jesus christ and then you got retail coming out which i think there's gonna be silvers from what we've seen i think there's been some early like walmart type of breaks going <coughs> on i don't know well i don't know if they're walmart breaks but um i think people have seen them at walmart 
I don't know if they're breaking them in Walmart. A little live stream. Yep. Little, right in the car dial. A little finger F in the packs. Whoa! I didn't say it this time. Um, <laughs> I shortened it. But, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, certain places retail is live. Retail is not coming out. We're probably not going to get it until the 7th, I think. So, but how let, do you let us know if you bust some? Right. I want to see if there's silvers. Yeah, there looks like, well, with the boxes I watched, they have two silvers in the front, but I didn't see any rookies. <laughs> so they definitely have silver cards in there. I just don't know if the rookies are coming out or not. They look cool. So those, the, the, the ones on the screen, the reds, like the curry that we're showing, that's only in the choice version. But what I was going to say, as a collector, how do you decipher all these different versions of Prism? Does it not seem like... I know we're in this, so it kind of makes sense to us, even though it doesn't. Nope, it doesn't. doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So how do you, you know, decipher what to buy? You don't know. You just don't know. <laughs> you, just you, just, you just blindly give your money to somebody? You just, you just do the old, here's my money, and hopefully I get something good. I have no idea. I have no idea what to buy. I have well, no idea. Shameless plug here. At least you know if you're breaking with us, we'll tell you what you're buying. You're buying mostly hobby boxes, which have the best values. <coughs> and we had a question in the chat that I was going to use for the show. Uh, retail versus hobby. And this could be Prism and it could be any product. Um, you're obviously better off going hobby. The odds are always better for hobby. Retail is going to be a cheaper price point. Uh, if you'd like to collect base cards and you're not hit chasing, retail could be the product for you it's obviously more convenient you're going to get your your bread maybe you still buy cds and you're going to target and right by the cds now there's sports cards so it's definitely convenient to buy retail but any product tops panini uh leaf that's in the store the odds to hit anything big are going to be a lot more extreme than buying a hobby box so that's kind of the main rule of thumb is don't really expect to get a Super Fractor or a Black 101. I mean, there is those crazy stories of guys pulling that stuff. There was a story of the Japan Otani that was coming out of the Mega Boxes. So there is some stuff, but do your research. Um, you know, people be like, I'm only spending $20. Well, you may spend three or $400 before you get a hit when you could have just bought a Hobby Box for 200 and you got your two autos, and you got your silvers, and you got your stuff like that. So And uh, answering Ziggy in the chat, uh, Choice was only distributed to Australia and Japan, I think. Yeah. So that's uh, that's why you don't see any. If you want some, um, you may be able to find it on eBay. Yep. There may be some uh, international dealers that are selling it on eBay. It's expensive. It's not. It's not cheap. It's yeah. I don't know what their original cost was, but it looks like international sellers are selling U.S. price about one thirty to one sixty a box with the one auto, and then I think there's like four parallels. Yeah, so. I mean that you break it down like that, it's uh it's it's pricey. We got some in that we purchased on eBay. Yep. Um and we're gonna see what it's about. I don't I don't know if it's gonna be a great value. I we just wanted to have, you know, some of it in see stock. See what it's like, yeah. See, what, see what's in there. Uh, um so you can try Com C. Mm -hmm. Uh Timmy. You can try Com C. Besides that, uh I, eBay eBay's kind of king right now. Yep, yep. eBay is uh, king for those parallels. And I wanted to, before we moved on to talking about immaculate football, um, other prices of silvers, um, it's pretty shocking. So there's a good level of investment here if you guys get some of these guys because it seems like all the money right now is going to Donchick. But you can get Shy Gilgis silver for around 50 bucks. Jaron Jackson's going for about 108 and he's having a really good season. He's top five right now in stats. Bagley's going for 90 and the Kings are on the up. Um, Grayson Allen is, is an oddball $16 Grayson Allen People hate his face But um, People loved him in college At least Duke fans Yeah I don't think he's doing much For the uh, the Utah Jazz I don't right think now. he's playing much Lonnie Walker's going for around 50 bucks You know what? Uh, one thing I didn't look at is Aiton What does what Aiton Silver's going on I think he's going to be the second guy Over Trey Young Look you can get Trey Young's for about 100 bucks So that's what I'm saying There's a big jump Unlike any other year Between all the talent Is Luca so heads and tails above that it's making the decision. I'm, actually, I'm surprised at the Michael Porter Jr. Hundred bucks. Yeah, hundred bucks. You, you're surprised that it's high, or is I it, think that's high. Uh, well, yeah, because it's the hype. Because he didn't play, so he's not right. So, so it looks like Aitons are what two hundred bucks, two fifty. Youngs are a hundred, but uh, Doncic's are five hundred. So you can almost buy. I, I think Doncic's come down to around three fifty. Three fifty, four hundred. Okay, yeah. so. But still, that's, I mean, that's the biggest separation I've seen, um, except for like the Simmons year. 
Because last year you had a lot of guys grouped up. There's there's a big heads and tails above with uh, Luka Doncic. So who are you guys buying? I heard some guys saying they're Kevin Knox. What's Kevin Knox going for? Um, Alonzo Trier did have a good game I yesterday. Think I think Knox. he had a close to a triple-double yesterday. I think he scored 20 points oh, for the wow. Knicks. Knox is going for about 60-70. Okay. Um, 60-70 on Knox. So those guys all seem like good investments to me. Got Knox on the right team. Right. Um, Alonzo Trier could be a, a, another guy that you never know. It could be a guy that comes out of nowhere. Um, especially if, um, what's his name, Durant goes to the Knicks, which is, is, a, is, a, is a good possibility. That he does go to the Knicks after this year. He told Durant he's or he told Draymond he's leaving. So, so, but uh, let's see what you guys have said in the chat. You bought a Knox the other day for fifty bucks. Sexton, that's another guy. Now is Sexton just a, like a? Is he like the the Timberwolves Kevin Love where somebody's got to score there? You know, because the Cavs are so bad. I mean, Tristan Thompson's playing well. It's I- ironic because. Uh Kevin Love would be the Kevin Love on the Cavs. <laughs> I, I, I know. No, I'm but, saying back in the Timberwolves days when he scored 30 I, I, points I a know, game. but like he's the same guy now on the Cavaliers, so he could just fill up the stat sheet, but he's hurt. So somebody has to score, right? Yeah. Kevin somebody has to score. stock has been going up. Yep. Steadily. Ziggy, I would definitely wanted to talk about Japan edition transcendent. Um, we may be able to squeeze that in. That's been, uh, it's been a topic of the morning been, here. been a topic of the morning. Been on a uh, couple calls with distributors. Uh about if we're going to want it or not. Wacky, wacky, wacky things. So we're going to move on to Immaculate Collection Football, which blew our minds. I mean, Immaculate's always been a great product for hits, but something they they ramped it up this year. Steroids. They, they Every sick patch, all great vet autos. It's been nuts. We're doing a case today, random team style, guys, so I would definitely get in on that before the price goes up because it's already in demand. All the distributors somehow are out of it. The secondary market. People keep jumping each other's buys on it. So it's going up. Um, I think it's a you know, good time with uh, the way Lamar Jackson played, Baker Mayfield played. Uh, but these cards have been phenomenal. We've been pulling tons of 101s. You can see on the screen here some of the 101s that have been pulled out of the product. Um, it's been a great, great run of uh, immaculate football. And like I said, um, probably their best year of it. What, did, what do you think, C-Red? You busted a couple cases yeah, over the weekend. The, it's absolutely the best year that they've put out. And I think um, I didn't realize this until we were opening the first off the line stuff. I, and I remember back to their sell sheet that they, when they were uh, kind of like, um, you know, doing some promo for it, that uh, most of the hits are acetate. And I was like, yep, this product is going to be pretty good. Yeah. Shiny. Just collectors love acetate. We do. We do like shininess. I don't know how we didn't get enough. That's what I want to know. Yeah, no, Can we talk hard. about that? Can we just throw all the distributors under the bus and be like, why, why did we get a fraction of what we were supposed to Because they knew. They had secrets. They were trading secrets. They knew it. Panini told them we cut it or but, whatever. But the thing is, is that not all of it's been busted. Where is it? Where is it, Doug? It's hiding in a closet waiting for it to go to 2500 I think it's it's not a closet. It's hiding in a warehouse. A closet's too small. Well, um, that, metaphorically. No, that, that's, it's hiding in multiple warehouses yes. just waiting for it to come up. Metaphorically. This is the biggest problem I have about the product here is the swooshes and the Adidas tags for the rookies. And I know it's game-worn, but, I mean, I know it's player-worn. Number to 15. So you got a patch from five years ago that was a one-of-one crazy. You wouldn't even get a whole Adidas patch. You'd probably just get the A on there and it'd be a one-of-one. And now it's just like there's swooshes number to 15, um, Adidas tags number to 15. That just seems a little you, excessive. For where me. do you think those are coming off of? Those are that's that's glove. That's, that's a glove. glove. Yep. That's a lot of gloves they're putting on, man. That's what I'm saying. I mean, fifty at least fifteen gloves, assuming they don't make any other sets. Unless it's a glove that literally has Adidas wrapped all around well. it. Well, I mean, it's a possibility. <laughs> so, I mean, I know relics don't mean a whole lot anymore for people anyway, but. My problem with putting so many primes and so many ridiculous patches is that you can't go backwards. You get now, now a, a, a one color relic is we already call it a napkin. Now it's just I don't. worthless. I don't. I don't call it a napkin. I, mean, I don't. I don't like that. I don't like that term. I don't like. Know, I don't why? like that term. Well, that's, why, does that's, it, why does it grind? I your don't gears? know. There's another. I mean, there's thoughts that go into it. There's so a, we I should mean, have added that into the things that you. Yeah. Yeah. Segment. Don't don't call relics napkins. But when they're just all white, it kind of, you know, you'd actually probably could just wipe your face with it. You know what I'm saying? You got a little spaghetti in your mouth. You could wipe your face with your uh, uh, Michael Agnew relic that you have sitting at the office. 
I haven't pulled a Michael Agnew for a long time. I'm just saying, but if you dug through it, you know that would be justified to wipe your face off. Have you ever tried to wipe your face with a card? <laughs> I'm going to. Is that, I'm is going that, to now. Has that been a, is, I mean, I I'm can, going to now. And, and what are you doing where you're like, oh, man, I need to like get this relic out because I, I need to wipe my face? You know, maybe you're at the office and you ran out of you ran out of napkins, and you know what? Maybe maybe you you're you're about to go to a big meeting, and you're like, I don't want to have this spaghetti on my face. It's called a sleeve, man. You just everybody's gonna, you're got to wipe it on your white unless, shirt, unless it's uh, sun out, guns out, and you don't have sleeves. But it's uh, you got a sleeve. You just wipe it on your sleeve. No. You're gonna go hunt down a Michael Legnew card so you can wipe your mouth. I'm just saying, if it's convenient, maybe you have a stack of cards on your desk that you don't want because they were napkins. And now you literally use it for a napkin. Whatever, man. Somebody went out of their way to design that. Got to put, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. It's degrading to call it a napkin. Yeah. It could be. No, could it be. is. It no, it be. is. So you're you're hurt. You're officially hurt. I'm officially by it. hurt. All right. Next time Dan's breaking, guys, you should say nice napkin. Nice napkin relic. Whatever. And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show him. Um. Laces, cleats. When are we gonna get jock strap relics? I mean, it, it, we probably already may have. I can you? Uh, can you? You could use that as a as a napkin as Ooh, well. Ooh, that would be a little weird. Oh, oh, that's where the line's drawn. Yeah, yeah, it's drawn <laughs> right there. Um, you don't. You don't know where it came from. It's true. You don't, you don't know. It's just a white piece of cloth. And also, you know what's? <laughs> a, you, you know, now that we're talking about, you know, I know the player worn stuff. Do do they do they wash the jerseys? Because that could almost be. What if somebody got like sick and they proved that rob gronkowski had and i know dna like you know stuff dies in the don't air, think it's gonna travel you know what i'm saying don't like, think it's gonna know, travel oh yeah you got you like i pulled this 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 hit and now i've got chlamydia <laughs> 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 i can't laugh with this cold man <laughs> It hurts to laugh. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> what if you did? And then you you you, you well, went on the you, Google then, machine. Then maybe there's a redemption there for uh, antibiotics. And you found <laughs> out that Clyde Edmund Gates had chlamydia, and you pulled his card, and then you have chlamydia. Could you sue Panini? I don't think that's the way it uh it, it travels. No. No. Are I you are you a doctor? Think, I, you may, <laughs> not a doctor, but I think you got to do some other stuff. Okay, get, okay. Yeah. How about the cards, like the cleat cards that are encased? You know, they're like sealed in I there. I don't think you get chlamydia from cleats. <laughs> Again, I'm not well, a, you don't know I'm what not, it, I'm not a doctor. Well, like, uh, you know, like Oscar De La Hoya, you know, you don't know what he's doing. Like we were just watching that Dana White, Oscar De La Hoya thing. He dressed up in lingerie. You don't know what kind of funky things people are in. Maybe they take cleats Again, and they I, do some weird stuff I with it. I don't think it transfers that way. I don't think that's how you catch it. Okay. I, I think, that, yeah. I think okay, well, what about, <laughs> what about the bug cards? Because I've watched Jurassic Park. What about the bug cards from Goodwin Champions? What if you could, like a mosquito card... And then you could get some blood disease from the mosquito card because you maybe you took the card out and you rubbed the mosquito on you and then you got it. I think you'd have to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, I don't think it actually, I don't think the virus transfers that way either. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Jeff said, I just logged into the hype. And this obviously isn't it. <laughs> we just got a little weird. We, we went from uh, talking about uh, wiping your face with a jersey relic to could you catch something from a player worn jersey card? Then again, that's where that's where we that's where we went. That's I don't where think we went so. With it. Um, what time are we supposed to break that? Three fifteen. We open up a lot of cards, so that's a if that is the case, we're taking Three. a huge risk. Three. We got four teams left for that next break, guys. Um, I just wanted to quickly talk about Drew Brees and um, where he is on the pecking order, and Philip Rivers as well. Where he is on the pecking order of all time. Where is Drew Brees on the mountain of all time? Captain Bolo tie. Well, no, well, Rivers is second. I mean, well, let's talk about. Oh, I just saw. I, 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 think just, we could I, all, saw, I think we could all. I just saw Rivers, and I just I think of the bolo tie. The bolo tie. Yeah. We could all agree that Breeze is better than Rivers, right? I mean, for the most part. Um, but where does Breeze? So you got you got Tom Brady, who's probably number one. You got where Joe Montana. Bree, uh, where would Breeze be without uh, Sean Payton? Well, where would Montana be without Waltz? Where would Brady be without Belichick? So I, I mean, but I'm saying, so is Breeze third? Is Brees third quarterback of all time? Third best quarterback of all time. We have third Brady. Best. Brady Montana, I think, is one and two, right? Maybe Bradshaw, maybe, because of Super Bowls. I mean, he didn't light up the stat category. I, I actually, I, you're not going to like this. You're not going to like this comment. But I would put 
Peyton Manning over Joe Montana. Oh, Jesus Christ. What the f- I would put Joe Montana before Drew Brees. I mean, I would put Peyton Manning before Drew Brees. Yeah, I could see that with the two Super Bowls. Yeah, I would. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Montana, Brees. Then Brees? Rodgers. No, I don't know about Montana over So Peyton you're going to say so you're Rodgers over Favre and Marino? Yeah, Favre had a lot of interceptions, man. I think Favre is higher than Rodgers. No, nah, I I I I got to go Rodgers. Rodgers over Roethlisberger? Yeah. Yeah. Two Super Bowls? Yeah, I like I like Rodgers. Damn, dude. My knee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I think Rodgers would be in my top 10. Yeah, Mar- uh, you got to put Marino in there. Yeah, that's, that's, but the the one the one knock on Marino is that no he didn't Bowl, he right? didn't win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Now, uh, you, Elway Elway you got to put in there. Elway's got to be in the top five. Yeah, yeah. How about uh, well, and then the other argument about Super Bowl. So you say Dan Marino's not in there because of Super Bowls. Well, is Eli Manning in there for Super Bowls? No. no. See, so there's you can make that exception, right? Uh, yeah, but watch Eli play and and go and watch Eli play and be like. That guy, that guy's top ten. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, the Tyree catch and the yeah. So there was a lot of a lot of help there. Strahan having a great season. I think he had what twenty and a half sacks that game, that year. What about what about the the old old school quarterbacks? You guys put any of them in there? Well, like what Bart Starr like before? Or, like yeah, before the Montana era. Roger Staubach. Roger Staubach. I mean, we mentioned Bradshaw. Bradshaw has four. So does that put him in the top ten? Because he has four Super Bowls. Oh, I I actually put Bradshaw and Montana. They're they're like neck and neck. I they're kind of kind of the same. Yeah. I mean, different eras. So you didn't see Montana didn't throw the ball as much as players have been throwing in the last like you know yeah. fifteen twenty years. They been, didn't put up the crazy stats, but he won games. Yeah, and that's that's Mike's right. The eras you can't really compare the eras. It's it's like the same thing like trying to compare Babe Ruth to anybody now. Um, Rivers. Okay, let's move to Rivers real quick. Philip Rivers, is he top 20 of all time? I think he's a top 20 of all time. Top 20. So top he's cracking 20. the top 20. Yeah, he's like 19. I mean, that's, I was just thinking, we were just talking about this the other day. Well, th- I mean, you, you could put Rivers up there with maybe Russell Westbrook. No, uh, 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 Russell uh, Wilson. In basketball? <laughs> I think he plays basketball. I was, I, wow, so Russell Wilson in the short two, no, 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 five Russell, years is, well, is comparable to Rivers? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Won, won a title. Yeah. I feel so bad for Rivers. I mean, he got drafted by the New York Giants, and Eli Manning cried like a baby that he didn't want to play for San Diego, so he gets traded to San Diego. And, you know, Drew Brees is playing there since so it's a couple years. And then he gets uh, – who's, who's – it was uh, – he had Holmgren – not Holmgren. He had uh, Norv Turner and um, the other guy, Schottenheimer. And they were always the freaking best team, but they just couldn't do it in the playoffs. And then they, then they moved to L.A., and they're playing in a soccer stadium, and all their games are like playing an away game. Like, man, this guy, and then he, good for him, he broke the record of most completed passes in a row this Sunday. And the Chargers look good. You never know. Do, so. you, think, do you think people overlook Phillip Rivers because when you watch him play, his mechanics are so funky? He has, like, a weird delivery. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the rest of the great quarterbacks in the league. Kind of, kind of sidearms it sometimes. Not very flashy. But yeah. but he get but he gets a job done. But he has a big arm though. He'll throw it deep when he, he has a big to. arm. But if you look at his mechanics, he doesn't. His mechanics are not solid. Like, well, neither and, is Roethlisberger though either, right? Roethlisberger's mechanics when he throws the ball looks better than Philip Rivers. Philip uh, Philip Rivers, uh, it's a his mechanics look a step up from Tebow. True. Yeah, and then he had a, he had those crybaby outbursts early on in his career, and he kind of had that, but, that you know, stigma and, and, on him. And then you, you bring up the whole Eli made it a big deal. He didn't want to play in San Diego. Us being from California, San Diego's a great place to live. Have you ever been to it San is. Diego? Yeah. San Diego's f- phenomenal. I, I think Phillip Rivers came up. He came up. But he didn't. But Eli has two Super Bowls if if, if. – Rivers was there. Would he? Could he have done? I yeah. Who's I, be, uh, well, I, I, here I we do. go. Here's a good question. Who's is, better, is, yeah. Eli Manning or or Philip Phillip Rivers? Rivers. E, Philip Rivers. There you go. So even it, even with the even with the junky ass commanding or uh, mechanics. mechanics. All right, we're getting short on time. I wanted to talk about this. Tops released this yesterday. I wanted to. Oh, actually, before we get into this, so Panini had a very 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 long board meeting on how to create a name for the next big football product, right? So it was a one card product. 
<laughs> and they called it Panini One. I, I think I think they should have went with uh, a little little Latin flavor and gone Uno. <laughs> it was. I mean, it took twelve hours to decide this name. It's a one card product, and they're calling it Panini One. So I, is Panini Two coming out after that, and then Panini Three? Two cards, three, three four, cards, four, four cards. cards. Hey, dumb. Hey, at least we understand that compared to Prism. What if they actually do Panini One Series Two and it's two cards? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's, exactly. It's like double the price. <laughs> Damn, dude, you're giving them too many ideas. So I wanted to talk about the Topps Advent calendar. So in the holiday spirit of things and in the spirit of like the living set and how they do their Topps now. So here's your Advent calendar. It started two days ago with Mike Trout. Today you can buy Clayton Kershaw. And uh, it leads you all the way up to Christmas. I want to know if anybody's buying this. I think it's a terrible idea because when I think of an Advent calendar, I think of Bad Santa. Yeah. And I think of this gentleman right there. Right, I think of that. That's all I think of. And I was like, I can't buy an advent calendar. I don't even think I could buy an advent yeah. calendar for my kids because I, of that reason. I love that scene when he basically gets hammered drunk, takes the uh, takes eats all the chocolate, and then he tapes it back up with like candy corn in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> and I think it does have some religious meaning, so I'm not knocking that aspect of it all. But uh, I just I, I don't know. You know, the marketing team from Topps coming up with the advent calendar. I think the design of the card is kind of lame. How do you get one? What, what? You order it, and there's an, uh, there's an infinite print run until it's done ordered. So it's the same thing as Topps now. It's the same thing as the living set. So Mike Trout was the first one. So I don't know if they've came out with the numbers, right? I don't know if they've came out with the numbers of it, but there could be 10,000 of those. So it's the same thing. They're trying to create maybe scarcity, and they want people to collect them all and tune in every day. I think you know, what it is. You know what we're not... You know what we didn't talk about? The exclusive club. The the Brooklyn Oh I the know. The Brooklyn Club. Yeah. I don't know if we're gonna have to we we could that's another good topic for the next week's show. But how many how many teams do we got in the next break? When we two. Still, two? Okay, so we still got time. Doug hit me with his impression of Neo in the Matrix hand and I stood still. <laughs> yeah, Etops was real popular as well. Um but go back to the 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 other the other image here and I just I don't know it, it, the the uh the Mike Trout one. The card to me just, I don't know. It just, Nothing wrong it with just, that design. It doesn't no. look, it looks like it should be in a retail pack. Though, it actually, like. it looks like Transcendent. No. <laughs> a little bit. What? A little bit. No, it looks like. Uh, a little bit. A little Transcendent. Like, it looks like Big Play or whatever they had that set came out. No, that, that's one of the best designs I've seen all year. I think you're being sarcastic. Man. Eh, maybe. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, it's not bad though. You know what, you know what it has that I love? You know what it has that I a love? A border? A border. You do love borders. I do love borders. And uh, shout out to Beckett. I stole your image with the trees in the background. I know it probably took you an hour to make that photo, but I stole it from you. So, uh, but yeah, Advent calendar. I'm sure there'll be Otani and Akuna coming up. Probably, if I had to take a guess, there's going to probably be Okuna and Otani right at the end. Probably, maybe Soto and Soto just to you know just to wait. You know they're going to get like Posey's probably going to be in there. They may do uh, Legends as well. You may see Willie Mays and Hank Aaron. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it kind of does look like museum, Mike. I, 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 I honestly, I'm be honest with you. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. This is the first time I even heard about it. I saw it yesterday, and I thought, hey, let's talk about an advent calendar, and I could intertwine it with Bad Santa, which is one of the greatest movies of all time, you know. And uh, you one know, of here the we go. one of the best holiday movies. It is. There's not a lot of good holiday movies. There's uh, Elf. No. There's That's a, not a good movie. The Elf is a great movie. Elf, Elf is a great movie. Elf is a terrible movie. It's a great movie. It's a Elf. terrible movie. It's one. It's probably Will Ferrell's worst movie he's no, ever dude. done. Yeah, terrible movie. Do the girl uh, that is now, a movie that can now, s- has a voice like an angel. Now a great, a great Christmas movie, Christmas Vacation. Oh, Chevy Chase. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Randy Quaid, right? Yes. Yeah, the Shitter's Full. The, yeah, the Shitter's yeah, Full. Yeah. That, that, that is a good flick. That that is probably the best Christmas movie ever. Is Home Alone considered a Christmas? Oh movie? yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Home Alone's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Hey, now we're getting on a whole other topic. I, I would What's rank, your favorite I would Christmas rank, movie? I would rank that over Elf. Elf is good. Elf is. Elf is top five. Oh, dude. Christmas movie all time. Yeah. Doug gives C Red the number two chair now. See, people are hating on you for your <laughs> elfness. Well, Dan also didn't like Crazy Rich Asians either. So, I mean, uh, yeah, we, that, we do have a different taste. That in films. was that was like, man, I don't even know how I sat through two hours of that. <laughs> I want the two hours of my life back. The only the only good part of that is when the dude was like shooting off the grenade launcher on the on the boat. 
That was pretty awesome. That was it. Yeah. I mean, it is no Fifty Shades of Grey, Dan. I mean, I know. I know. I know it's no <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. I've <laughs> seen all three of them. <laughs> of course. Of course you have. I think number four is coming out. You're going to have to get in line. No, they, they only had three books. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not going to stop them from making more movies, man. All right. So we're going to uh, stop the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have uh, Flawless coming up. Immaculate, like I was saying, how loaded Immaculate is. Get in on Immaculate Random. We've got Vertex for you guys today, Chasing Mahomes. We've got more Black Diamond Hockey that just released today. we got a first off-the-line NBA mixer. Um, Rookies and Stars with Cyber Packs. Our quad doubles coming out. Another quad double case today. And then Friday, Absolute Basketball releases. And it looks like it's pretty cool. A lot of nice RPAs. Um, I think there's there might be Logo Man pieces in there. We'll have to stay tuned for the preview on that. And um, so... Stay tuned. Follow us on Facebook, Mojo Break. Uh, join the fans of Mojo Break on Facebook, the group. Great group of people that uh, talk about cards and uh, trades and sells and everything like that. And follow us on Twitter, Mojo Break underscore com, and Instagram, Mojo Break underscore com. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. Show 70. I can't believe we made it to 70. And I don't know how many consecutive weeks we've done this in a row. It's a new record for us. So uh, it's because you guys are tuning in and, and giving us good feedback. So thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next week. And that's it. Thanks for watching this episode. Visit mojobreak.com for more info and your break spot. And we will see you next time on 